Today we're looking at the magnificent Merida E160. Stay tuned. Hi folks, I'm Jason and welcome to eBike Center. Today we're looking at the multi-award winning E160 range from Merida. There's five bikes in the range, three carbons and two aluminium. And in particular today, we'll be focusing on the E9000, which is the second from top level carbon bike. So why the E160? Well, it's a bike that's been exceptionally well reviewed in the past, and it's one that we haven't had on the show yet. So let's check out its vital stats. It's a 160 mil enduro slash all mountain bike. All the bikes come with a Shimano 85 Newton meter EP8 motor, 630 watt hour battery, although that is only a 500 on the smaller framed models. The E9000, specifically the E9000 has, gotta get this one out. Specifically, the E9000 is fitted with the Fox. I can't, it's my foof. I can't say foofs. My foofs. Specifically, the E9000 is fitted with the Fox Performance Elite front fork and Performance Elite mid shock. It's fitted with a Shimano XT drivetrain all round, but it's the Link Glide version, so the e-bike specific, so that's gonna last a lot longer than the, the traditional XT that's fitted to the normal, well, used to be fitted to e-bikes, which struggled a little bit with the extra torques. So they've created the new Link Glide system. XT brakes, front and rear. And interestingly, for this bike, it's fitted with a Lazain front light, which most mountain bikes aren't fitted with an integrated light, and it's got an integrated rear mud guard as well. The bike's a mullet setup, so that's a 29 inch wheel on the front, 27 and a half inch wheel on the back, running the Maxxis Minion tires as well as DT Swiss HX hubs. So guys, have you, uh, have you liked and subscribed yet? Come on, get clicking. So what was all the hype about with all of the great reviews it's received? Well, we got out on it, we had a ride, and to be honest with you, we were equally blown away, to be honest with you. It's a fantastic riding bike. I've always been a huge fan of the Trek Rail and that's kind of been my go-to over the years. However, I got, got on this after getting off my Trek Rail and I was surprised just how nimble and agile this bike was in comparison. It's a lot quicker on the downhill as well. I would say the rail was probably slightly better on the cross-country terrain and certainly it was a bit better at climbing, but there's not a great deal in it to be fair. And, and, and to, to an extent, I'm pretty picking at feathers anyway. It's not, there's not a massive amount between some of these bikes as a whole, but it just, it's very hard to describe, but once you got on it, and we had the same with quite a few of my colleagues who rode, rode this bike as well as others on a weekend out that we, we arranged recently, we all kept coming back to the Merida. There just was something about it. The moment you got on it, it just, everything felt in the right position. Like the, the reach on the handlebars just seemed perfect. And it wasn't just for me, it was for, for many of us. And we had different heights and builds, and, and it just, everyone said the same thing. It just felt right once you got on it. On the downhill sections, it was very playful, it was very nimble, very agile. It's also slightly lighter, I would say, than the, the average full-powered full e-bike out there. I know that the, the new Wild FS is going to kind of a bit of a game changer in terms of bringing the weights down, but this bike probably did it slightly earlier. It's, it's very much in the low 20s, which most full-fat e-bikes are kind of more towards the middle end. And you do notice that when you ride it, it's definitely yeah, definitely a little bit more agile and it does feel yeah, it does it does feel lighter i'd say at the same point certainly on the descending it's very much a, you can kind of point and shoot this bike if you want to as well you don't have to throw it around you can if you want to just send it straight and it's so planted so comfortable and so it just feels incredibly secure underneath you so yeah i'd say overall it just ticked so many boxes for me and, and for my colleagues as well who spent some time on it although it's incredibly well specced and bang for your buck i'd say it's it's really good particularly at the moment because there are some offers on these from Merida as well at, at this stage but the e160 8000 they've run out of so they're now offering the e9000 at the price of the e160 8000 it's, it's pretty good bang for your buck anyway in terms of the spec but I would actually say the bike is, to use a cliche, is more than the sum of its parts. The way they've sort of honed everything together has made overall a, just a, an awesome like riding bike. If you're a cross-country rider, it's probably not quite your, your bag, but certainly for anyone that's doing enduro or, or all mountain, it, yeah, it, it's great in pretty much every condition that we throw at it. Just checking, um, you still haven't liked or subscribed? Come on, clicky clicky. <laughs> So the, the mullet setup of this bike really came across in its, in its playful and agile feel. If you're a fan of the mullet setup, then this is certainly a bike worth considering. But even if you're not, there's very little drawback. We actually went up at the same time with an Orbea 2022 Wild FS, which was running 29s front and rear, but it was also running the Bosch motor. One thing we did notice, the Bosch powered bike is certainly more punchy across the cadence levels than the, the EPA motor is. However, 
I feel like the, the EP8 motor on this has been tuned to an extent that if you get the cadence right, and it's more of a, a realistic cadence level, if you get that right, the peak power then comes in and the bike kind of, I'd say the sound of the motor almost kind of sings to you. And at that point, suddenly it, it sits in this sweet spot. So if, you're, if, you're, if you've been a, a mountain bike rider for a long time, you might find that the motor setup on this actually suits you more in terms of its, its lifelike characteristics. However, for a lot of people, the broad, sort of power range of the, of the Bosch motor across different cadences might well appeal to others instead. So th that's worth considering when, you, when you're choosing a bike, particularly when you're spending this sort of money. A bike with either a Bosch or a Shimano or EPA motor, you're not gonna be disappointed. But for me, I did really enjoy the running characteristics of it. I spent most of my time on this bike in eco mode, which, yeah, kind of did everything I wanted to, because as soon as you got it in the right cadence and the right gear, I was quite happily keeping up with people that were in trail, some people that were even in sort of an EMTB mode or equivalent. Moving on to the aesthetics of the bike, personally, I think it's an outrageously good looking bike. I think they've kind of nailed it everywhere. From the, the thermo gate, which is at the top end there, which a lot of people think might just look nice, but it actually performs a function. So because in this particular version, it's a carbon frame, electric batteries get quite warm inside the frame, which on an aluminium frame, it's quite easy to dissipate the heat, but carbon kind of stores it in there. So what they've done is they've created a, the thermo gate at the top, which is almost like a radiator that you'd have on a car, allows air into it, keeps the bike nice and cool, so it gives you better performance from the, the battery overall and also increases the long, 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 it's easy for me to say, long, I can't even say the word, long, <laughs> longevity, there we go, the longevity of the battery. And a couple of other little extras that you get in the, with the Merida, you get front and rear mud guards, admittedly they're only, they're only stumpy ones which are really mountain bike specific, if you're planning on commuting on it, you're going to get wet but that's not what they're for. The other side of things, it does come with a very small toolkit at the back, uh, well, a multi-tool. Most bikes don't, and we get asked about this a lot. Do I get any tools on my bike? Most of the time it's no, but this one you do. It's stored away neatly at the back of the saddle, and it's useful, obviously, for when you're on the trail. So who is this bike for? Well, it's for anyone that wants an absolute blast, to be fair. It's just brilliant fun. If you're looking for a great deal of fun to have on the weekends, out on your mountain bike, whether it be trail riding or mountain enduro, it's, it's just brilliant. Like, it puts a smile on your face. Everyone that got on it just immediately said, this is just fantastic. It's, dare I say it, it's one of the best bikes I've ever ridden. Certainly on the, on the full power side, it, it seems to sort of transcend slightly the, the feel of a full power e-bike and the sort of lighter e-bikes, so let's say like the All Bear Rise. So yeah, it does sit really nicely in there, but there's no, there's no buts actually, it's just awesome, frankly. Some people might find that the 630 battery doesn't give them quite as much range as they'd like. There's no range extender option and I know some people would prefer to have the 750 battery that comes in some of the Bosch powered bikes um, and I'm sure we'll be seeing in some of the Shimano powered bikes as well. But for me, I would say the trade-off of having a much lighter and more nimble bike is certainly well worth it. And if you don't need to use like the turbo and the sort of high-end EMTB modes and things like that, then you're not gonna miss that extra battery capacity. But for me in the riding I do, the 630 battery was ample, but for those that want to cover more distance or perhaps they're, they're a heavier rider or they need to ride the bike in higher modes more often, then looking at the bigger batteries options is always well worth looking at. Don't obviously forget that the bigger batteries, they do come with a higher price tag and they certainly come with a weight sacrifice, let's say. So we would recommend out of the carbon versions going for the 9000 model, which we, we've got over my left shoulder here. If money's no object, obviously go for the 10K. You've got the Kashima Coat factory forks. You've got XTR gearing all round. Not everyone's gonna need that. Well, sure, hardly anyone. No one actually really needs that, but it's awesome. If you've got the budget, go for the 10K, but I would say for bang for your buck, as there aren't any 8,000s at the moment, and this is being priced at the value of the 8,000, then this is an absolute no brainer. As you might be able to tell, I've become quite passionate about this bike. So I'm hoping some of you have ridden it as well, and I'd be really grateful to hear your comments and your feedback and see what you thought about it as well. Perhaps it's just me. So in conclusion, what do I think of the bike? Well, if you haven't actually been able to draw con my conclusion from the footage so far, you probably haven't been watching the video. So yeah, I love it. I think it's a fantastic bike. I would say one of the best bikes I've ever ridden. Thank you guys very much for taking the time to watch the video. Toby and I and everyone else at eBike Center are really grateful for your time. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any comments, we'd be grateful to hear them. Uh, please leave them below. And if we don't see you in store, we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.